Hello, everybody. Welcome to another wonderful episode of Beyond Dance Podcast. Hope everyone doing. It. Hope everyone is groovy today. Hi, Lisa. How you doing? I'm good, Gab. How are you? Have you drink I'm coffee good. today or what? You All good? day, every day. Yes, I am on my. Well, I'm having tea right now, but okay. definitely, definitely on little, on caffeine. A little better for you. Yeah, uh, yeah, a for sure. For you. So today's uh, we are taking a slight little shift. You know, since we are Beyond yeah. Dance Podcast and. I'm super excited about this episode. Uh, I'm really excited to introduce this person. Uh, her name is Yura Min. She's an unbelievable figure skater. Uh, can't wait to interview her, talk to her. A little bit about Yura. Uh, she was born and raised in California and moved to Michigan in 2011. She has been skating for 20 years and 10 of which she did ice dancing. Uh, she's hoping to make the 2022 Olympic Games by qualifying this month in Germany, which is a week away by the way, and she's doing this a week away before her competition. She's crazy. Crazy. Um, uh, She currently has six dogs, chickens, ducks, a cannery, and only two (laughs) are with her in Michigan. Um, Also, Canary. 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 I'm an immigrant. I'm an immigrant. (laughs) Uh, Yura is also a 2018 Olympian. She's a four-time South Korean national champion. She's currently attending college. She's a dog sitter, coach. Her hobbies are surfing, video gaming. I'm excited about that. Uh, snowboarding, learning dance off YouTube. I love it. Eating Cheetos and catch, uh, catch hot wild Cheetos. Birds. catching wild birds. And hot Cheetos. Not and hot Cheetos. Cheetos. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hot Cheetos. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Uh, eating eating hot Cheetos and she's hopes to own an animal sanctuary sometimes. I wonder why. Maybe because yeah, really. already half of it and I she wants to it. travel in advance. So hi Yura, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Doing so good. good. We're good. Great to see you. Great to hear you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for uh yeah, being being able to do this a week away from Olympic trials. Oh my God. So did you do nationals already? No, so nationals are in January. So Olympic trials are this month. And then um, usually based off of that, it's it's a complicated process. It's a little uh, difficult. But um, so basically, you qualify your country a spot. And then at nationals, you qualify your spot to go for that country. So it's basically oh. like two trials, I guess I would say. Wow. Okay. And you're skating for South Korea? Or are you skating for US? For South Korea. For South Korea. Cool. What's that history? What's that history there? Um, so I've been skating for 20 years. Um, 10 years, I did singles. And then I switched to ice dance when I was uh, 16 years old. And that's when I moved to Michigan. Um, and I've been, I competed for the U.S. for a year or two. And then I switched to South Korea. And I've been competing for South Korea for about, I would say, seven to eight years now. And that's Fantastic. a fairly fairly common theme in the figure skating world is people would represent different countries, kind of, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That, that happens pretty often from, from what I know. So you started as a single skater. So what made you switch from singles to ice dancing? So growing up, I've always been like a team player. I like to play like team soccer and team, just team activities in general. And uh, when I did singles, it was, I liked the artistic part of it, but the jumps, I could not, I could not get the jumps down like some of the kids can these days. And I was also a late bloomer, so um, I didn't have um, the, you, what we would say, like the higher level jumps that you're supposed to at a certain age. And then I was like, you know what, let me just try ice dance. It might be fun. I don't know. And then once I started doing it, I completely fell in love with it. And then I had to like beg my parents to let me just switch to only ice dance, which took a very long time. But here I am now. So, you know, <laughs> jokes on you, mom and wow. dad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I grew up in the skating world too. That's actually what I wanted to do. And I mean, not anywhere near the the level that that you're at, but Gavin and I talk a lot because obviously his parents are in the skating world. And um, I always wanted to choreograph for skaters because I just thought, you know, get a little bit more of the artistry and stuff in there and the ice dancing. It's so, it's so cool. But so you, you came to Michigan from California. I know I get that a lot. (laughs) Oh, I know. Well, I'm in Ohio. So, you know, I know what your, your pain is in the, in the winter time, but was that a hard transition for you? Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, I moved 
<laughs> fairly young, I would say, but I was just used to beaches and the palm trees and the California weather. And I really did not <laughs> expect the sudden switch of moving here. I moved here right when winter started. And I remember moving all my uh, stuff into my new apartment and it was freezing outside and there was snow. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. And yeah. the year that I moved here, it just happened to be like the coldest winter of the past hundred years or something so yeah. I was just like this is not for me know, but then um, as time kind of went by um I really enjoyed the fall here in the spring um and the summers are amazing and you know the winters they're long but I the rest of the seasons kind of make it worth it that's very cool very cool so with you transitioning from like solos to skating with a partner how was that what was some of the challenges and maybe some of the things that you were like, Oh, this is actually much better than I thought this would be. It was, it was definitely weird. Cause usually if I'm on the ice and um, let's say I'm at a competition and I'm doing my routine and if something goes wrong, I can always just, I talk to myself in my head and I'm like, all right, so I have to put this jump in the end because I missed it. And I fell on in the first half, but you kind of have to do that with a partner now, but you can't talk to each other. So you kind of just have to like, <laughs> eyeball each other and be like okay so like this we're doing this so you kind of have to just like communicate without um saying anything so that part was interesting and also finding a new partner and skating with them is the was the weirdest part for me because it's kind of like hi nice to meet you and it's like all right so we're going to spend every single day for the rest of our careers together sounds good and I don't even know this person you know so and the right. tryout period is usually like a couple days I would say three days to a week max and then you just have to get to know know this person and then you have to build a career with them and build a relationship. And it's just, it's a crazy, it's a crazy, crazy sport. <laughs> but how does that even, how does that even come about? Like, I mean, we could say, oh, these, these two will look good together. Let's do a duet. But like you said, you're, you're building an entire career about this. I mean, do you, do you, does that work through the, like the rink? Does it work through your coach? Does he find somebody? How did, how do you even come about to do that? Yeah. So when I, uh, when I first started dance, I moved to Michigan and then I found a partner fairly quickly, but then that didn't end up, ended up not working out because the, my partner, he didn't speak any English and he was from Russia. So the communication aspect wasn't really like working yeah. there. So yeah. we had to split up and that, so I have, I've had multiple partners until now and the dynamic is strange, but, um, nor most of the time I'll contact people. If someone says they've split up with their partner recently, I'll contact them directly and say, Hey, like, do you want to try and skate together? We can have a tryout and see how things go. But my, my most recent partner, uh, Daniel, he's, he actually came about it was kind of like fate because I split up with my last partner uh, after the 2018 Olympics. And uh, I would say like a week after I split up with my partner, he, Daniel ended up splitting with his partner. So our coaches just kind of like put us together because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure if I was going to continue skating. I was thinking of retirement. I almost like, I packed up all of my stuff in Michigan and I was ready to move back. And then my coach was like, Hey, so we have this boy and I think he should come in tomorrow. And I was like, oh, you know, my flight's at 10 a.m. I kind of have to leave. And she was like, no, just come in and skate a session at like six. I was like, OK, sounds good. So I came in at six and then Dan and I saw each other and we were like, I see what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> so it. we had a quick yeah. 45 minute tryout. I went to California for a month and then I moved back here to start training again. Wow. Oh, you know what's good. so crazy? I was I was listening to you. Oh, totally disappeared. I forgot to plug in my laptop. But what was so crazy for me to hear you say was you were thinking about retirement. I know. And it's <laughs> such a like it's so bizarre because I I don't think people realize like I was reading some statistics on at what age figure skaters retire and it's like mid twenties if you're a single mm -hmm. skater. You know, if you're a, I think if you're an ice dancer, you can probably go a little bit longer in ice mm -hmm. dancing. Probably not in pairs. Pairs are kind of wild too, but mm -hmm. it's just such a crazy thing to think about that this person trains their whole youth, young adulthood life, and that expect expectancy of their professional competitive career is so short. And you have to like make it happen in such a sh short amount of time where people would develop, you know, their careers all the way to their thirties, forties, you know, like it doesn't happen in the skating competitive world. It's just, it's, insane so when you said it I was like oh my god I can't believe she even said that 
Yeah. Every time I, I talk about retirement, people who don't understand figure skating, they're like, what do you mean retirement? You're only 26. And I'm like, yeah. oh, like, you know, retirement from this life and I have to move on to my next life, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, because I think from such a young age, we use our bodies up so much, like training every day for, you know, decades. And that really takes a toll on everybody's bodies. So as much as we would love to continue skating after like way past our thirties, our bodies just physically can't handle that kind of um honestly torment anymore <laughs> do you guys do you have like a a strength program or a lifting program a nutritional program or anything like that that kind of guides you through what you're doing yes absolutely um we so we skate five days a week we have a dance instructor uh and we have a ballet instructor a modern instructor then we have our workouts that i have twice a week and then we have pt and acupuncture and all that stuff to kind of like keep us in place but yes we also have nutritionists and sports psychologists that we work with just to you know um have a the smoothest ride possible as we can yeah right. what is That's your guys's uh what's your guys's like schedule what is your schedule for when you're training uh pretty specific like tell us from what time you have to get up ice time you know okay <laughs> um so in the summer it's definitely more intensive so i would say our summer our summer schedules are you know wake up at probably like 5 30 um get our breakfast in uh do our little uh, warm-ups and stuff get on the ice by 7 a.m we'll skate around two hours get off go and have second breakfast i guess come back we'll skate again or we'll oh have ballet in between God. and then we'll have workout on mondays wednesdays fridays and then on tuesdays we have ballet on thursdays we have dance and then we have just like little um you know body like therapies and stuff in between there but we have the weekends off so that's nice <laughs> what time do you go to bed well when I was younger, I would actually go to bed super early because I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I have to get my 10 hours in or else I'm not going to be able to stay tomorrow or whatnot. But yeah. nowadays I can't sleep. <laughs> I think I slept too much in my youth. So I'll just like <laughs> lay in bed and have an existential crisis <laughs> until like 12. <laughs> but I try and go to bed uh, around 10 and then I'll fall asleep 10, 30, 11, maybe. But like tomorrow morning, I have to be up at six. So it's not too bad. Okay. Uh... Well, thank you for doing this at a later hour, too. Yeah. yeah, so is, my, yeah. You know, it's better than laying in bed and having an existential crisis. So that, I'm be talking to you guys. <laughs> that, that is so oh true. God. So what I'm about... Get, get you to meditate. There yeah. you go. <laughs> uh, what, was your, what was your schedule like while you were attending school? Oh, man, yeah, it was crazy. Um, last semester, I was taking 11 credit hours. So, whew, so I would wake up in the morning. I would go to practice, I would come back, I would have my online school for about two hours, then I go back to training, and I do workout, I would do my therapies, and then I come back home, and then I, have, I would have class until like six to nine or so, and then I would go to bed, so it was just like all morning, all day, all night, but this semester, I'm only taking one class, so I can like breathe, and you know, <laughs> pet my dog once in a while, let him out, <laughs> I forget they have to go potty once in a while, <laughs> and speaking uh, of dogs, how many do we have? Six? We six. Yeah. I, I don't know how that happened. are they? So in my apartment currently, I have two. And then in my house in California, we have four. So it just, I don't know what happened. We just kind of lost control. Like we had two huskies and then they had babies and they had like eight puppies. And then of course you get attached to them. You're like, oh, we'll just keep one. So we kept one puppy and then okay. we got the, the male dog neutered. So we're like, all right, so it should be good. But then our female dog escaped and like got pregnant from some of our neighbor's dog and came back and she had seven puppies again. And then of course we got attached again. <laughs> yeah, so we kept all the puppies. So now we have like six dogs. <laughs> oh, my, and these aren't tiny little dogs. No, you my, said my husky, dog, right? Yeah, I, so we have three purebred huskies, one husky mix. I don't even know what the other half is. I have, so it was some neighbor's dog. I'm not really sure. <laughs> and then I have a Yorkshire Terrier, and then also some random mix of dogs. So it was supposed to be a Pomeranian when we bought it, but then as it grew up, we realized it wasn't a Pomeranian. So we have this like all another random dog. <laughs> I, I was it. I was just gonna ask you, how did you make? the choice be from all those six and pick two you know like because you know <laughs> yeah. that would be the hardest thing for me to do to look at my pets and be like you yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. smaller yeah 
<laughs> I know. Um, we picked one right what right when they were born. We we're like, ooh, that one's cute. So we would just like hide her in the back <laughs> and make when everybody came to like pick up the other dogs. We we're like, this one doesn't exist. Don't look at this one. <laughs> that is funny. So you do you do a lot of dance. Uh, obviously, you you like the you know one of your hobbies is watching YouTube videos, dance YouTube videos, and learning and. I've got a privilege to dance with you a bit and move with you. And you're actually like super funky. And you like to, I think, I, I don't know, maybe I've told you this, but when I came to you guys um, a few years ago and danced with you guys, uh, you were definitely had like the most swag out of everybody. <laughs> you were almost like, I was like, okay, she's, she's crushing it. <laughs> and obviously dance plays a huge part in your particular uh, skating category right because ice dancing is like it's literally almost like ballroom on skates with some of the most amazing lifts and stuff um so as far as so you also take ballroom I'm assuming right yes so it depends on the the theme of the dance for the year so we have two programs a rhythm dance and a free dance and the free dance is usually lyrical uh so we can choose whatever music we want but the rhythm dance there's a theme for the year so Last year, it was um, it was a dance was called a fin step. So you could do like a jive to it or you can do, you know, it's what's so more ballroom. And this year it's hip hop. So, uh, yeah, so wow. uh, it depends on the it depends on what um, the theme of the, the year is. And it's interesting because we get this new style every year and then we have to learn it. And we've never, let's say I've never done a tango before. Like I have to learn how to do a tango within a season and then put together a program and compete it. And then the following year, it's hip hop. And a lot of ice dancers have no idea how to do hip hop because it's really never come yeah. up. It's more of a recent thing. We've only done hip hop, I think twice ever, like in ice dance history. This is the second year that we've been doing it. So yeah, it's, it's been interesting to see all the different, like different movements and diversity among um, all the skaters. And I, I love hip hop. So for me, it was like, yes, you know, finally in my time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, uh, we're thinking of retiring after this year. So it's a good way to kind of just like, Bang and out. <laughs> yeah. Well, after you do the Olympic trials, but that's now. And then would you say nationals are in January? Yes. Yeah, so we have um, I would say a couple of internationals in between. And then there's a competition called Four Continents Championships. And then there's nationals, uh, Olympics would go in between there, and then there's the world championships. Wow. So winter Olympics are 22. Uh, it's yeah. in February of 2022. Yeah, because we bounced. Yeah, with lovely. I know it was crazy okay. with COVID and everything. It totally yeah. just because Tokyo just happened. So it's like, oh yeah, yeah we have, we have two, two years. years. Yeah, yeah, like literally oh. back to back. Yeah. Wow. And where are yeah. the Olympics this year? And in... it's in Beijing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know what's gonna happen because the Olympic. Um, so we we were supposed to have a competition in China uh, called. I think it was Cup of China. No, no, no. Four Continents. Four Continents was supposed to be in China, but it actually just got canceled today. So now it's kind of like, are we doing the Olympics? Is it happening? And, you know, it's kind of the same thing as last year because all of us were kind of sitting around waiting for the competitions to happen, but they kept getting canceled. So we were training and we were like not sure when we were competing. And that I felt like that uncertainty was gone because all of us started competing again. And then now I see these competitions getting canceled again because like the, the new Delta variant is starting to spread everywhere. And I'm just like, oh no, it's like all over again. It's a nightmare. It <laughs> that is. Ha that has to be so discouraging for somebody who like trains so much to make that one competition. And then all of a sudden like, oh, it's canceled. And you're just like. Yeah, yeah. that actually in 20, in I think 2019, yeah, 2019, the world championships, we were training for it and we were supposed to be leaving in two days. So we were, we were training hard, you know, we're trying to get, reach our peak. And then I got off the ice after like a really hard training day. And then I got a notification on my phone saying the world championships were canceled. And I was like, oh my gosh, we're literally, I was packing my bags to leave oh, and, it got canceled. and it was just, it was awful. It was just so strange to be in a time where there's, you know, it's not in our control. And it usually, oh, if it's like an injury or something, you know, you can handle it. But when the whole world is kind of chaotic, you don't really know what's going to happen. And that's just been like the toughest part I get, I would say for the past two years. Mm -hmm. So now that we've been talking about, you know, Olympics and competing and stuff, how do you deal with that stress? Like, what do you do? Or I'm sure they've coached 
coach you guys through different techniques of how to manage yourself and and all that uh, can you share some of that with us yeah well it's i guess it's different for everybody it depends um but for me i i love competing because you know we're training all year to do these competitions to go out there and show our programs so for me nerves have never been really a factor in my career i've always just been excited to go out there and like do the program and whatever happens happens and if it's good it's good if it's not it's not and i'm kind of just nonchalant about that but there are of course days where training doesn't go as planned. Um, so usually if that happens, you know, I'll just take my dogs for a super long walk and I'll just, you know, sit and say, you know, there's still, the grass is green, the sky's blue, everything is fine. I'm just having an emotional breakdown, but it's going to be okay. And then I just like okay. trying to let it slide by. <laughs> so yeah, for me, I would say, I just like to go outside and um, kind of remind myself that I'm not only a figure skater, but I'm also a human being and I need to treat myself like a human being sometimes. So that's kind of just how I deal with it. What about yeah. Olympic oh, level? Yeah. What about what about when you're there and all yeah. that pressure? I mean, do they? I uh, you know, I mean, I was joking with you, telling you we gotta get you to meditate so we can get you to get sleep. But I mean, do they give you tools like that too to get yourself in a calm down state of mind where you can go out there and just you know kill it? Well, it's. Yeah, I mean, you, the best we can do is train ourselves to death so that we're prepared for the competition. Um, but, you know, when it comes to time, of course, when you go out there, like in the Olympic crowd, it was a completely different experience because the whole stadium was full and it was live broadcasting all over the world. So I'm sure like millions of people are watching and I was just like, all right, I'm about to step on the ice and everyone's watching me and this is really stressful. And at the Olympics, I had the worst back knee. I like literally, I just broke out the first day I got there. And I had like, there were these makeup ladies in the back and they were trying to put foundation on my back to cover it up. And then like, it was the wrong color. So they tried to take it off and I'm like, they're calling my name. I got to get out there. So they're trying to like, put foundation on my back and <laughs> that just added to more of the stress. Oh my God. <laughs> but like, once I stopped on the ice, it's kind of like, it kind of like just clicked in. It was like, boom, autopilot. I know what I'm doing. I know what I have to do. Um, this is what I've been training for. And it's just feel like, I just, slap my legs and I'm like all right let's do this you know it's four minutes yeah. that's it I just got to get through this four minutes and smooth sailing wow. from there <laughs> wow. and what about uh for my personal experience being on the ice a little bit ice hurts a <laughs> lot it is so unforgiving how do you guys how do you deal with injury prevention or having a messed up ankle and having to compete because I'm sure you've done that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure. You, so, so how do you go about all of that? Because you also have to be incredibly smart with, you know, you don't want this one injury to be your career end. Uh, yeah. You know, so what do you guys do? What do you go through? Um, I would say for me personally, I, I listen to my body for sure. If something's hurting, I'll, <clears throat> I'll tell my coach, just, you know what, this is, this has been hurting for a couple of days. I need to go figure it out and then I'll be back. So if it's before a competition, of course, it's, it's difficult to take time off. So sometimes we just kind of have to take some Tylenol and push through the pain and then we'll have to deal with it later when we get back, which is obviously like worst case scenario. Cause you never really know if it's like, it could be a stress fracture. Like you don't know what the injury could be, but, um, I would say just day to day, uh, stretching before getting on the ice, stretching after getting on the ice, um, icing, anything that hurts, going to PT, doing kind of doing like anything you can to keep your body um, in shape and healthy. Mm. So with with ice dancing, this is kind of a funny thing, but when I was younger and I would watch it, I was always like, yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> but the older I was getting, I saw I saw one pair that really stuck my uh, that really like made me think differently about it, and it was uh, Pavelis and Margarita. Uh, Margarita. Oh, Rita, <laughs> Margarita. Rita. <laughs> I'm like, Ooh, what's, up? What's, their, what's their last name? Pavelis and um, Pavelis Vanagas and oh my god, it's gonna drive me crazy. But they they were their ice dancers, and they did this one of their you know routines and it was a, during a show and I this is the first time I watched I'm like wow 
And I started seeing the beauty of it and the artistry of it. And now I would go as far as to say, I feel like eyes dancing is, is, is like the, the very artistic part of figure skating. Oh now. yeah. Hands you down. Know, what's did your, you ever what's... see, did you ever see Torvald and Dean? Have you ever seen Bolero that they did? I mean, we're talking way back because that's, you know, they're a long time ago, but they were the first time that I think it was that they used an instrumental and they only used one song and they mm -hmm. did Bolero and it was just, it was breathtaking, you know, just that. Yeah, definitely. Cause we talked about the artistry and skating that sometimes it gets so technical. It's all about, you know, jumps and, and spins and this and that. But I felt that the, the artistry was going away for a while. And mm -hmm. now that, you know, it's kind of, I think taken a little bit of a curve and came back, but I, ice dancing by far, I would feel also is about the most artistic. So do you, do, would you say then you guys take the most dance classes out of all of the categories of? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I right? don't think, absolutely. I don't even know if the other disciplines, I'm sure they take dance Maybe classes. ballet. Exactly. But I don't know about ballroom definitely not um right and then they also don't have the theme dances every year so they don't they're not required to learn a tango or a blues or um some kind of ballroomy or hip-hop or whatnot yeah, so yeah. yeah we definitely take the most most dance classes yeah i wish i wish they bring it back for everybody in the skating world just those themes and stuff like that because it has at least in my opinion and hearing some critiques too about the, the judging systems and that they've started implementing and how that started to kind of shift the athletic, uh, you know, prioritize athleticism over artistry. And it makes me happy to see the ice dancers are still keeping that artistry kind of alive and going and developing it, developing it in a, in a, what am I trying to say? Just developing it there, period. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. And, <laughs> Vera, do you guys work with a choreographer when they, when you set your routines or do you have a lot of input on what's going on with that? So, yeah, when I was younger, I would definitely just listen to my coach and do as he said, or um, listen to the choreographer, whoever was doing our program. But nowadays, now that I'm like a little older and hopefully a little wiser, um, I work with my coach to build a program now and also with my partner to build a program. So I would say for the last two seasons, um, my partner Daniel and I have had a lot of in our programs and we've kind of just put in what's comfortable for us, what we think is looks good. And we've started learned to like kind of fight for what we what we want to do on the ice because um the coaches they're there for guidance. And we want the older you get, the more you realize that they're not there to tell you what to do. They're there to push you in the right direction so that you can develop and you can start becoming more creative and artistic right. and you kind of have your own stamp in your own skating. So all ice dancers have their own um, own strength, I would say. So I think now my partner and I are starting to learn what our strengths are and we're able to have more input in our programs. Is that a is that a very more of a generational thing, do you think, with doing the input or no? Is that, I don't know. Maybe or just hear too much about all the crazy Russian coaches that are too very involved, <laughs> very involved and strict and don't give you a lot of freedom to do that. That's true. I guess it depends on the country because I have I've trained in the U.S. and I've trained in South Korea, but I haven't trained really anywhere else besides that, maybe just for like a summer camp or so. But I would definitely say um, the Russian skaters do have like all all the countries have their way of skating in some mm -hmm. way because they've developed that in within that country. So you can always see like the Russian skaters are the fastest. They're the quickest. They have the fastest twizzles. They have um they have a lot of the technicalities and then you would say the canadian skaters they are more graceful they have um they have um, their artistry is i would say more than some countries and i guess that's kind of what you appreciate in nice dance is that every single skater has their own individual charisma but at the same time within the country it's you can see you can see when someone is from which country like you can watch someone skate and say oh they're from russia because of the way they skate and because historically Russia has skated that way. So it's kind of cool to see that. And now, nowadays you see Russian skaters going to America and mm -hmm. Italian skaters going to Canada and stuff. So you can see like this intermingling, I guess, of cultures, which is really cool to, 
cool to see like happening. So your partner, Daniel, is he also skating for South Korea? I mean, obviously you guys are a partnership now. What's his affiliation with? Yes. So he, yes, he represents South Korea with me. So in ice dance or in pairs in general, if you want to represent that country, just one person has to hold a passport. So that oh, person is okay. me. But then for the Olympics, you have to, both of you guys have to have passports. Mm -hmm. So we are currently working on his passport so that if we do make the Olympics that he can, um, we can go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a minor little thing, you know. <laughs> um, so Yura, you had something happen to you during one of your numbers <laughs> that that you can read about in the news, but I'd rather have you talk about it. What happened? She you had a little wardrobe malfunction. And how did you guys go about that being on the stage you were at? Oh my gosh. We competed that year, I think eight competitions and at all eight nothing's ever happened with my costume and then I got into my starting pose um at the team event at the 2018 Olympics and I was like all right we're good and then 10 seconds in I can just feel like this breeze on my back that I normally don't feel when I have my costume on oh, no. and I was like something's wrong and then I did a turn and I felt my costume just whip open and it wasn't like one of those where it's like around your neck so if it comes off it's fine it was it <laughs> I had one hook hanging on to the entire costume. So if that one hook came off, like everything was coming down and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm about to flash my movies into the entire world right now. This is so dramatic. Wow. But <laughs> I did my best to keep it together and smile. And uh, we got through half of the program and my partner did help me a lot to kind of like keep it together. And I kept my arms behind uh, my back so that I didn't, I, it didn't fall forward. And then, um, so there were a couple of mistakes here and there within the program because I had, I had to like roll my shoulders back or pull the costume back up. And when we finished the program though, I've never heard the crowd go crazier than that because, wow. oh my gosh, you know, everybody loves to see like something go wrong. I, I realized that then I was like, because I was headlining like Yahoo News and I don't know, all these news channels were wanting to interview me, like asking me about this wardrobe malfunction. And they're like, yeah, you had a Janet Jackson moment out there. Like, how, how did it feel? And I was like, oh, oh my God, God, I don't know. <laughs> I was yeah. just really traumatized. <laughs> really? Oh, Clearly, it didn't affect it didn't affect things too much because you guys qualified that year, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was <laughs> good. Maybe the judge is like, ooh, extra point, extra point for that <laughs> yeah, for that recovery. Something. They're like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, but but that's kudos to like kudos to your partner. Uh, you know, trying to help you out throughout the while all of that is happening because, you know, it's now you have to like you're thinking about the steps and the edges and the glides and and the elements and the now you're adding though. and now you're what adding happened? a costume. And what what went wrong with it? So Did it, it was just a, a little hook in the back. So I guess it was my mistake thinking that one hook was going to keep the whole costume on, but it was fine all year. So I was like, you know, it's going to be no problem. The yeah. hook just came undone somehow, or maybe I didn't put it on properly when I was getting dressed. I honestly have no idea what happened. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. That's wow. Funny. So you, you said you want to uh, drive in the van, right? <laughs> yeah. What, what, where do you want to go? Where, where are you going? Yeah. Where are we traveling to? <laughs> where's Yura going so uh, because of like I, you know, I've lived in Michigan for so long and um, because of training I've had just like this regimented schedule for so long that I feel like it would just be so nice to have like when I say a van like I mean like I want to build my own van with like a kitchen and a bathroom and all that stuff yeah that's so epic the fact that you yeah, said you like, want to build your like, own van like a little yes. house on wheels yeah yeah exactly and um because we've been able to travel around the country and all, all over the world but because we're at a competition we don't really get to truly enjoy uh what like italy is like or what france or germany or, and that kind of stuff so first i want to start in the united states you know i want to do all of the nature tours and like mountains and ponds and lakes and all of that first and I'm gonna take my dog with me of course <laughs> and I feel like I owe it to him because you know I've had him for four years and he's just been seeing the inside of this apartment and sometimes outside when he has to go potty so I feel like I owe it to him to just like show him that there's other things in the world besides peeing on the same tree every day <laughs> I love it. that sounds like a wonderful adventure yeah, so yeah. hopefully I'll be able to do that. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for, for me, but I got to 
I got a lot of things to do, a lot of things on my plate. But once I finish those, I that's definitely something on my bucket list. Uh, that's not, that just sounds really fun. It sounds kind of very like adventurous, liberating kind of list. Just hit the road and not worry about things. That's that's pretty cool. I'm what sure after. Sorry. Oh, uh, I'm for in my environmental science. Oh, there you go. That's where mm -hmm. my son's at. That, yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, well, he's, he's, he graduated his master's in environmental science and climate solutions. Oh, cool, yeah. So he was in, um, where did he go, Flagstaff. He was in Flagstaff for his master's. But um, yeah, that we need all, we need all of you and more right now with that. <laughs> so I know. Cool. I know it's been crazy just like seeing the weather is because my dad would call me from California and be like California's on fire and then I'm like yeah. Detroit's underwater <laughs> I don't yeah. know what's happening in the world right or, now or <laughs> okay now it's 50 below zero and we've never been that cold ever you know which it's like people talk about you know climate and they're like oh well, it should be just hot and I'm like no it goes the opposite way too you know yeah, yeah we've had some some pretty weird um, experiences too out our way. So have you taken a little break from your college or are you to do this and then jumping back in after? Yeah, I mean, so after I graduated high school, I took seven years off of school just to like focus. And then after um, the after the 2018 Winter Olympic Games, I was like, you know what? I think I'm getting a little too old now, you know, like time's gotten short. So I got to start going back to school. So I started going to school. It's, this is my third year now. So after um, this semester, I'll be transferring. I'm doing all my college application essays right now. So hopefully I get into one of them. <laughs> and you then will. we'll go from you there. Yeah. 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 Very cool. So, uh, what about injuries? Have you had any crazy injuries? I'm sure you have. What, what were some of the, some of the like, most more memorable ones that, and how did you, how did, what did you do to recover? Um, so I've had ankle sprains here and there, and I actually was born with an, an extra vertebrae in my spine. So instead of having L5, I have L6, which makes my back super flexible, but at the same time, I'm prone to a lot of back injuries. So mm -hmm. usually just, I'm, I haven't had any major injuries like in, on my back. So I've been, you know, doing good with the therapies and everything. Um, I have had multiple concussions, um, oh since my I was God. like, so I was younger. Yeah, I, I think I've had probably four or five at this point. Is that, is that from ice or just ice and something, some other things? Oh, yeah, all ice. Um, all ice either, yeah. yeah, the first time I had this girl fell and she was going full, sleep, uh, full speed and she hit my feet and I just fell back and I hit the back of my head. Um, a couple times after that, we, I was in a lift and I, uh, my partner dropped me and I fell on my face. That was my second oh my one. God. Third time I was in a lift, my partner fell and I hit the back of my head and I was out for like, I think three weeks for that one. Cause I, I had to wear sunglasses. I couldn't like see, wow. look at my phone or, you know, um, read anything. I literally just had to sit there in a dark room for three weeks. It was awful. <laughs> wow. It was awful. Um, but I would say my most memorable one is, um, I got my teeth knocked out. Ooh. Yeah, that was, yeah. So these are fake. <laughs> oh my I, we, God. We, we were doing a lift, uh, my, one of my previous partners and he fell and I was, my, my face was facing the ice. And I, I, when you're in a lift for a girl, I'm sure a lot of girls can relate. You have no idea if you're falling or if it's going good because you're just spinning and you have no sense of what direction is up, down or left or right. So I didn't realize I was falling. So I didn't cover my face or anything. And my, I went like face first into the ice and I knocked two of my teeth out. So these two are fake. And I've had like, I've had them replaced so many times because they just kept falling out. But yeah, I would say that's my most memorable one. Oh but my besides, God. <laughs> <yeah>. oh. <laughs> that's that's insane. Like basketball's tough or something like that. Like, oh my God. And my wow. mom was like, I didn't realize I signed you up for hockey. Like, why are you knocking your teeth out out there? Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow. Oh do you do you have any m moments from your uh, just competitive or even performance career that that are maybe really stuck out to you for one reason or another? Yeah, um, yeah. I guess I've had a couple for sure, but I mean, the Olympic performance was definitely one I will never forget because I was representing South Korea, and the Olympics were happening in South Korea, and no matter how. Uh, how long you go in your career, it, there can be a time where like never, 
I'm sure a lot of the skaters have never competed in their home country at an Olympic Games. Like the timing was absolutely perfect that I got to make my first Olympics and it happened to be in my home country. So it was just, it was amazing because we never compete in Korea. Uh, there's not many competitions that happen in South Korea. So whenever we go overseas to like, let's say Germany, um, the German team gets so much like love and applause from the crowd. And we've never been able to feel that before because we never really competed in our home country. And having like the biggest competition of our entire lives be in our home country was crazy because literally I would, I would just be skating by and a wave of, of like cheers would just be happening as I was skating. By. And I, was, I wasn't doing anything. I was just skating around, like warming up. And I was just like, wow, you know, I feel like a celebrity. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> That's so nice. That's, <laughs> it's just such a cool experience to, 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 to be on that stage, just, just to be there representing your country. And yeah. um, it's, it's, it's really, excuse me. It's really cool um, and a class all by yourselves There's yeah not a whole yeah. lot of people that get to we were actually yeah that. we were talking to how now breakdancing is part of the next summer olympics and yeah. just i was talking to uh, our one of our guests and i'm like man i wish i was younger <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know i really i so but at the same time i'm so happy that we have dance like dance at an Olympic level, which is pretty exciting, even though it's break dance, it's still dancing. Yeah. And just, you know, it's just what they're going to go through and that excitement and that experience is just, it's, it's really, it's really, really something super special. I'm really, I'm really interested to see like how they're going to score it. I, I don't, has break dancing ever been scored? Like, like this is two points for this. Well, so player. no, yeah. not, not, from my knowledge, it's all, I mean, they, they do point systems in a way. Uh, a lot of times it's from what I know, at least when I competed with, you know, they would have like, okay, originality, creativity, uh, uh, difficulty level, you know, how you, how you mix your movements. So they do have criteria like that. And some competitions would actually score. Some competitions would let judges just decide on the spot whether like you know one guy is here one guy is on the right one guy is on the left and so if they want the guy on the right to win they'll just point at him uh oh, wow. they've done competitions where an audience decides literally mm -hmm. by and so it's it's so very different but our one of the guests we just had on the episode his name is uh Cujo Jacob Lyons and he's actually now training to be certified in this judging system that will be implemented in the olympics oh cool and so, so they're he, really thinking about it they, they're really they have like a whole committee together he said that they're really trying to get this right and not lose the whole flavor of it but mm -hmm. yet obviously it has to be judged you know yeah obviously. that's what i'm thinking it's going to be it's going to be so strange because um, I, I, that was the first thing that popped into my head when I when I saw the news that breakdancing was going to be an Olympic mm -hmm. sport. I was like, that's amazing. And I'm like, how are they going to score this? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, so cool. as far as dance goes, what's your favorite dance style? Oh, I would say I used I grew up um, watching this guy who do who pop. I don't remember his name. Poppin something. Oh, oh, there's so many poppin somethings. He was on America's Got Talent. He got really far. America's Got Talent. Yeah, he got really far. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna Google that immediately. <laughs> and I, I'm trying he's, to. He's been in like step up movies. I I recognize his. Are you talking about Matt Chad? No, Robot Guy. Ooh. I really? think it might have been that guy. Tall, pretty, like model. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Matt Chat. He does yeah. robot kind of like yes, very but he's animation. Been doing it for like forever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Matt Chat's awesome. Yeah, he yeah, is a beast. Just, just popping in general, I thought was just the coolest thing ever. And I would just watch YouTube videos and try and do it myself in my living room. I have a lot of videos of just like me trying to dance when I was 16 and it was it was horrific. But you know, <laughs> you gotta start somewhere, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. And in Michigan, there's really no, there's no like hip hop here, especially 10 years ago when I first moved here. There was nowhere I could go to a studio and learn how to do it. So the best thing I could do was just watch YouTube videos, slow them down, like reverse it, 
And then I would just kind of like follow the movements that they were doing. And that's how I learned how to do hip hop. That's amazing. <laughs> that's cool yeah. That's awesome. Ingenuity. And now we actually have instructors. So I can, I can like comfortably take a class instead of trying to learn, learn something off of YouTube. But so well, you how are... do you transfer? Sorry, Gav. How do you transfer what you're learning in the studio and then putting on, on skates? Is it a huge, like my biggest thing was everything in dance is in relevé, which means we're on their toes, we're on their toes and everything with skating, mm -hmm. you're flat, you know, yeah. so you can't push, you push, you're on your toe pick and then it's like, okay, now you're, now you're doing a face plant. So um, <laughs> how, how is that transition for you, you know, with, with your dance classes and stuff and then coming onto the ice and everything has to be so... It is difficult. So we'll we'll learn a dance off the ice and then we'll try and transfer it on the ice. But most of the time we can only take maybe 30% of what we've worked on off the ice because moving, we have skates, we have each other, you know, we have to balance each other out. And a lot of the times um, in dance, you can put your foot sideways and it's fine because, you know, you're not gliding anything. But for us, if you can only go forward or you can go backwards, you can't go sideways. So that really limits us to what we can do on the ice, but we do the best we can with our upper bodies, I would say mostly. And then, um, yeah, but it's unfortunate because like, I wish that we, the rules were a little more lenient because we can only have a 10 second dance in, in our routine in one spot. And I'm like, you can't, you can't do anything in 10 seconds. You know, that's not enough yeah. time to do like to show anything really. So we do our best to do things while we're gliding but I would say hip hop is definitely the most challenging, um, the most challenging theme of dance that we could do because it's everything's sharp, everything's like wavy, you know, and everything's groovy. So it's hard to kind of keep your feet on the ice while you're trying to do these movements. So uh, everyone is doing a great job so far, but I haven't really seen like a real hip hop program this season yet. Everyone's kind of scared because, you know, it's we're not really sure if it's possible or not. No one's really like done a full hip hop program. And um, I'm just excited to see like the rest of uh, the season and see how people kind of like digest the material and bring it onto the ice. Well, it's, right. it's hard. I mean, for me, at least I've gotten to do a little bit of, well, I've, I mean, I break danced a lot more, but when I would try to skate and groove, it's like impossible because you're, you're using your legs in such a different way when you're, when you're on skates that that just to create that little bounce yeah. was 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 I'm like wow it's a struggle it's 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 really hard to 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 have that little unless you are just in the spot you know mm -hmm. where you're kind of standing and doing that but if you're gliding I don't I was like I tried I tried to like I would do this like one little bump move where your knee comes up and you're and and it kind of worked if you're I was like, doing uh -huh. Yeah, but still, I'm like, wow, this is, I see what you're saying with, with hip hop and with the rules too. I, as soon as you said, as soon as you started talking about the rules, because I remember one of the rules was you cannot put two hands down. Yeah. And I think we were trying to work on some spinny thing mm -hmm. and you guys were like, no, we can't, we can't put two hands down. And I'm like, ah, oh, that yeah. is so limiting. It's just that's so actually, yeah. That's so funny you mentioned that because this year they allowed it. So now we can put two hands on the ice. <laughs> you came in the wrong year. Of course they did. I know. <laughs> Bummer. Aww. But that's good for you guys though. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're slowly starting to change it. And I can see like the judges are making an effort to um, make it a little more comfortable for us so that we can actually like do, do things. But, you know, I haven't seen anybody do that backwards worm thing that you do on the ice yet so <laughs> hopefully one day when we're doing hip-hop we get to see yeah. that yeah <laughs> well, uh, we you... wish you so much luck I mean that's going to be that's going to be so fun I hope it I hope it takes place oh yeah I really do. I'm definitely yeah. going to be looking forward to watching you in in yeah. 2022 so no pressure on, on in the <laughs> next week <laughs> I know right I'm like Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one last question for you, and this is my geeky side. Video games, go. What do you like to play? <laughs> Warzone, Call of Duty right now. That's all I play. Do okay. You play? Oh, right right oh now. Let's God. go. <laughs> you... Wait, I, I love Warzone. Me too. I, yeah. I'm, I, okay, I I've got, I'm ranked in it a little bit. What? So you're like really good. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm like better than average. So how I many can... kills do you get like on average in a game? In Rebirth. In in rebirth, in uh, rebirth, on average, 
I don't know, maybe six. Okay, so we're all, we're on the same, right? So okay. we can we can compete. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times I like to play like like right now they have the trios. Yeah. And I'll go solo in trios. I love that. It's oh, or I'll go gosh. or I'll go like solo quads, and I die sometimes really quick, and sometimes I'll. But oh my, hey, if you can't fall asleep tonight, because I'm definitely playing tonight. Big week. She is not going to play video games. I know. Games Actually, with you. yes. Okay. After. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Absolutely. This is my one stress reliever that I, I come home, I eat my dinner, and then I put, turn my Xbox on, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> timer. But kids. you need a timer. <laughs> I'm so excited you're playing Warzone. Oh my God. We're That's gonna... too funny. So you're getting giddy like I get when we start talking about like food and stuff. I get all excited <laughs> with nutrition. He's getting all excited about video games. Well, oh I'm goodness. always looking for people to play with that I know. I play with a lot of strangers, go. and so it's kind of fun when you know somebody and you can, you know. Actually, you were saying how Warzone is like your stress reliever. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. My sister, so I have a younger sister. She's 19 now, and two years ago, she came to L.A., and she's just the opposite of me in a lot of, in a lot of ways, and she wasn't feeling too well, and so we kind of started playing Call of Duty, <laughs> I know. five five hours later oh god we're still playing call of duty and she's just and i asked her i was like hey do you want to stop she's like oh like i can keep going anyway she left and actually call of duty is like what i credit for bringing my sister and i even closer like right oh, because of call of duty we're like <laughs> But she called me a week later. She left home. She called me a week later and she's like, hey, I'm like, hey, she goes, so uh, I found this video game. We, we can play it together on our phones. And I go, oh, really? What is it? And I could I could feel that she's smiling. And she goes, it's Call of Duty Mobile. And I go, oh, my God, I've created a monster. She's like, yeah. So now anytime my sister's kind of going through a hard time, she's in college, she's having difficulty sometimes, or she's just feeling lonely or depressed, she called me and I can tell by the sound of her voice. I go, hey, Jazzy. She goes, hey. I go, you need to shoot some people, don't you? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll sign on and we'll play for like an hour and it'll be great. So, oh, it's, it's God. A, so you found your stress release. It's like your little wind down release. That's, that's yeah, awesome. absolutely. I mean, it's, it's so funny too, because um, I come home every night and I play video games. And when my mom visits or my sister visits, she's like, don't, aren't you stressed out from playing this game? And I was like, no, why? And she's like, you're literally screaming for two hours when you're playing this game. I don't understand how this is relaxing for you. And I'm like, no, it's really like my med meditating, you know, it's like my Zen mode. And I'm like, die. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it's I love awesome. It. Hey, what? <laughs> oh, Lisa just disappeared. Well, while while I still have you and Lisa's frozen uh <laughs> on, on the other side, um any any last kind of piece of I don't know, advice for I know most of our audiences are dancers, but just in general, anything you want to say about the careers or you know, pursuing your goals or dreams, because that's clearly such a, you've accomplished already so much, you know? Yeah, I would definitely say you have to be persistent, no matter how, th how tough things get, no matter how down you feel, um, you're always going to come up from this, I guess, roller coaster of emotions. So don't ever, don't ever put yourself down for, you know, not being perfect, because there's nobody in this world that is perfect. So the best you can do is be a, the be a better dancer you are today than you were yesterday. That's the only thing I live by. And as long as I skate better tomorrow than I did today, then that's my only goal. So I always keep that in mind and just remind yourself that you're human and treat yourself nicely because I think a lot of athletes forget that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I would just say, you know, be persistent. If you're going to go for something, go for it all the way. You know, you can't just, you can't just half-ass it. You have to go for it a hundred percent. Very true. Very true. Well, Ira, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, good luck next week. Oh my gosh. I will be thinking about you next week. <laughs> but, Thank uh, you. Again, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thanks for sharing. And uh, yeah, uh, better see you on TV soon. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, well, that concludes today's episode, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. As usual, uh, you know, tell your friends, subscribe, visit our website, Instagram at Beyond Dance Podcast. And yeah, till next time, everyone. Peace.